In the previous section, we configured a Windows FPGA system. By the end of this module, you will be able to select the host target network setup for a real-time FPGA system. Here we see some high-level steps for configuring a real-time FPGA system. So the first thing we'll talk about is selecting a host target network setup and then detecting the remote target. Then we'll configure the target network settings. We'll view devices and interfaces. And lastly, we'll add and remove software. So this module will focus on that first piece right there. OK, let's talk about the host target network setup. So let's talk about two different options. OK, so option number one is you have your host computer and your uh, real-time target connected to the same local area network. So in this case, they're both connected to your local area network, or LAN. And typically, a LAN will have a DHCP server. So we'll talk about what DHCP is in, a, in, in, in some of the coming slides. The other option is you have your host computer and your real-time target connected directly to each other using a crossover cable. So in this case, uh, you have a real-time target, and then you've got a crossover cable connected on one end there, and the other end of that crossover cable is connected to an Ethernet port on your host computer. Okay, so that's the direct connection setup. So regardless of which setup you use, both the host computer and the target need an IP address. Okay, we'll talk about what an IP address is in the next slide. To configure a remote system, the host and target need to be on the same subnet. So to do this, sometimes you might need to temporarily disable your firewall. OK, so now let's talk about uh, what an IP address is. So an IP address is the unique address of a device. Um, so for every device that's connected to a network, there's going to be an IP address associated with it. OK, so an IP address is a set of four one to three digit numbers in the range of 0 to 255 and you'll have this dotted decimal notation. So if we look at this example IP address, it could look something like this. It could be 224.102.13.24. So that could be uh, an example IP address of your real-time target, for instance. The next thing we'll talk about is a subnet mask. So a subnet mask is a code that helps the network device determine whether another device is on the same network. Okay, so. Uh, let's let's go through an example to explain this. So the most common, or, or one of the most common subnet masks is 255.255.255.0. So if if this is your subnet mask, then for two different um, for two different IP addresses to be on the same subnet, then the first three numbers need to match. Okay. So for example, let's take a look at our example IP address. So if we had if we had a real-time target with an IP address of 224.102.13.24, an example of a host computer that would be on the same subnet, it would have to have an IP address that starts with 224.102.13. And that fourth number could be anything between 0 and 255. OK, so the IP address is a unique address of your device, and your subnet masks tells you if another device is on the same subnet. Uh, the last two bullets we have here are gateway and DNS uh, address. These have the word optional next to them, because a lot of times you don't need to configure these. Uh, the reason why is if you have your IP address and subnet mask, uh, once you submit those, the gateway and the DNS address can be automa uh, automatically generated. In this slide, we see a couple different options for IP addressing. So let's talk about the first one. So the first one we see here is DHCP. Okay. So if you have a network and it has a DHCP server, what that does is each time you connect a device to that network, the DHCP server will automatically assign an IP to each, each device that connects to that network. So for example, if I had a local area network and it has a DHCP server, if I had a real-time target and I connected it up to the network, the DHCP would automatically assign that real-time target an IP address. And if I connected up my host computer to that same local area network that has a DHCP server, then the DHCP server will automatically assign my host computer a different IP address. So this is a common network protocol for administering IP addresses. The next one I want to talk about is link local. So link local addresses are network addresses intended for use in a local area network only. Um, so if you have a link local address, 
um, it's always going to have 169.254.sumnumber dot another number. So the auto IP feature, what it'll do is when you connect something up to the network, it'll first try to see if there's a DHCP server. And if there is no DHCP server, then it'll automatically try to use a link local address. So let's say I have a real-time target uh, with auto IP. Well, when I connect that up to a network, um, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to look, hey, is there a DHCP server out there that's going to assign me an address? And if it looks for that and it doesn't find a DHCP server, then it'll automatically default to a link local address instead. So what that means is if it doesn't find a DHCP server, then it's automatically going to assign itself an IP of 169.254.sumnumber.sumnumber. The last option I want to talk about is a static IP. So a static IP is just a, an, an IP that's not going to change that you can manually assign uh, your device. So for example, if I connect up a real-time target and I want to assign it a static IP address, then I'm going to manually say I want the IP address to be something. So for example, I can say I want to assign a real-time target in a static IP address of 10.0.0.4. And that way, I'm manually assigning the IP address instead of allowing something else to assign it for me. OK, let's talk about these IP addressing options with a Windows host and how they also work with a real-time controller. So first, let's talk about a Windows host. On a typical computer running Windows, what it'll do is it'll first look for DHCP. So if you connect up that computer to a network, it's going to first see, going to try to see if there's a DHCP server to assign it an IP. And if it doesn't find one, then the Windows computer will default to using a link local IP address. So remember, a link, link, a link local IP address will be 169.254.something.something. However, you can also assign a Windows computer a static IP. And this is something that you can configure in the Windows environment. Now let's talk about IP addressing options with a real-time controller. So if you're using a real-time controller, usually, by default, it'll look for a DHCP uh, server when you first connect it to a network. And again, um, if, if the real-time controller has an auto IP feature, what it'll do is it'll look for the DHCP server first, and if it doesn't find one, then it'll use a link local address instead, which is, again, 169.254.something.something. .something .something. You can also assign a real-time controller a static IP if you prefer instead. And the way that you would assign a static IP address to a real-time controller is you would open up Max, or the Measurement and Automation Explorer, and you would manually assign the static IP address there. Now let's talk about Ethernet cabling options. So let's talk about the use case where your host computer and your real-time target are both connected to a hub, router, or network switch. If this is what you're doing, then the type of cable you want to use is a standard Ethernet cable. So these are typically cables that, that, that look blue. Now let's say you are using uh, the setup where you're connecting your host computer directly to your real-time target. In this case, you would want to use a crossover Ethernet cable. And the, the, the difference between a standard Ethernet cable and a crossover Ethernet cable is pretty similar, except with the standard Ethernet cable, the, the wiring goes straight through. And then on a crossover cable, two of those wires are flipped. These days, most of the times, you don't have to worry about which type of Ethernet cable you're using. Most of the times, devices are able to figure out what type of cable it is and automatically adjust for it. Now you can select the host target network setup for a real-time FPGA system. Next, we will detect the RT target and configure the network for a real-time FPGA system in the Measurement and Automation Explorer.